Let's take a look at how we find the minimum variance portfolio for a two-stock portfolio. Now we know that the standard deviation for the portfolio is the square root of what's inside uh, these parentheses, and that would be the amount we put in stock A squared times the variance of A plus the amount we put in B squared times the variance of B plus two times the percentage we put in A times the percentage we put in B times the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B times the correlation coefficient um, between A and B. And this 1 minus um, WB squared is just the weight we put in A. I've made it um, the same variable as WB because WA plus WB equals 1 because when we differentiate, we're going to differentiate with respect to, in this case, WB and solve for WB. So we're trying to find the minimum variance portfolio. We differentiate, we set it equal to 0, and after doing um, the differentiation and some algebra, we get that the amount we should put in B is equal to the variance of A minus the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B times the correlation between A and B divided by the variance of A plus the variance of B minus two times the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B times the correlation coefficient between A and B. So let's go back to um, an example here. And here I have an example, and here's the formula again. But here I happen to have a portfolio A that has um, an expected return of 8% and a standard deviation of 3%. Um, B has an expected return of 14% and a standard deviation of 6%, and I also have the correlation coefficient. And what I've done, I've, I've put the formula in here for calculating the standard deviation. I also have the expected return, so I can plot it in standard deviation and expected return space. So let's take a look at what we have here. If the correlation is minus 1, it turns out that we should put 33.33% in stock B and the rest in stock A and that will give us the minimum variance portfolio. In fact, it'll give us a zero risk standard deviation because they are perfectly negatively correlated. And if we scroll down here, you can see right between, you know, 33% and 34% it's um, it's 0.0300% at 33%. Then it starts to get higher. So actually, if we were at point, you know, 33.33%, we would actually have zero risk here. How does this look when we have different correlations? So let's take a correlation of zero. And let's see what happens there. If we have a correlation of zero, okay, we can't get to zero risk, but where's the minimum variance portfolio? Where's the least amount of risk? When we put 20% in B and 80% in A. So let's, again, scroll down here. This is B, 20%. This is 80% for A, and you can see that we have a risk of 2.6833% at 20%. When it was 19%, it was slightly higher at 2.6841%. And at 79%, it's slightly higher at 2.6841%. So, in fact, it's symmetric here. These are um, between um, 79 and 81%. And right in the middle there at 20% is the minimum risk portfolio. And let's try one more. Let's try a correlation coefficient of 0.5. Okay, it turns out here 
that you just shouldn't put anything in B and you should put all your money in A if you want the lowest risk. So it doesn't bend backwards. This is the lowest risk you can get. That's not a low enough correlation here to um, provide real diversification benefits. I mean, you get a little bit, but basically if you want the least amount of risk, you should um, simply buy all of um, stock A, the lower risk portfolio. There is some diversification benefit because you can see that um, you get a little better expected return, well, not very much, a little bit higher with slightly more risk. So there really isn't much benefit here. So you can see that, again, if you want to find the minimum variance portfolio, you basically solve the, um, the minimization problem for portfolio standard deviation and solve for one of the weights and then you can plug in. So we found that again for um, let's say zero correlation you get a little bending backwards here so you see that you're actually reducing risk as you add the risky portfolio B or the risky stock B toward in your portfolio. All right, and if you had the case where you had perfect negative correlation, you're actually able to hedge perfectly and have a zero risk portfolio.